Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 of season two. I'm Nick Powells, joined by Charles Inner Nicola. Today, we are going to talk about Property Management Inc. Dinesa, I want to welcome you to our conversation. Um, so what I would love for you to do as an opening statement, um, if I said, why would I buy into Property Management Inc.? What is the what is the value of the brand? If you could position that and tell us a little bit about the brand, yeah. um, I think that'd be helpful for our, our audience. Perfect, perfect. Well, hey, thanks. Um, and it's always great to be lucky thirteen here. Uh, so we're <laughs> we're thrilled there. So um, I'll tell you just a little bit about why um, why PMI, what makes us special, what what makes us unique. Uh, you know, when I was looking at PMI um, to to join the team here, there are se several things that really made it interesting to me. One is um, the ability to, people think about property management, they think about um, long-term residential property management. Um, one of the things that really attracted me to PMI was the fact that in addition to long-term, we also provide training and support and system for uh, association management, which is a growing industry, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, as well as short term. Uh, so you think about all the Airbnbs and that industry and how it's exploding. Um, so management there, as well as commercial management. So for many people, when they're looking to um, get into franchising, many times they'll buy you know, um, one location, and then in order to grow, they'll add another location. And with PMI, the beauty of it is that you can build a diversified portfolio by going in and just adding each of these additional pillars. So as we look at it, there, the growth potential here is, is phenomenal. Um, our, most of our franchisees, they come in, they start with one pillar, they get trained, they either identify another champion to add that second pillar. They come in, we train them, we provide them with the marketing, we build them a website. We do all of those things so that they can continue to to grow in their existing territory, but just offering a little bit different, uh, di different service there. We, um, as we look at the industry, um, uh, Ibis World just released the stats um, recently, and uh, property management industry they're they're putting a value of about eighty eight billion in the U S. Uh, alone, and so eighty eight billion dollar market. Uh, of which there are about 300,000 property management companies. So you talk about the potential there. Uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And then we take a look at things like short-term rentals um, and the growth in that industry. I mean, you take a look at it, the online bookings have dwarfed hotels. Um, and even through COVID, you know, they've, they've been, um, they've been uh, growing, growing phenomenally. Um, and then we look at, community management and association management. We look at that industry, you look at the growth of associations uh, and you look at the number of companies who provide management association and you see that that in just the, the, the HOAs, um, the number of HOAs growing is far exceeds the number of businesses to management manage them. So huge, huge potential there. So from, from our standpoint, we we look at PMI as a phenomenal opportunity, um, recession resistant. You know, um, we've got French, uh, franchisees who were existing property managers who saw the opportunity to add additional revenue streams through PMI because of our buying power and our ability to negotiate free software, things like that. Um, so a lot of lot of opportunity for PMI. Tanessa, so Paul, you mentioned software and and franchisees getting in really to diversify. Outside looking in, it looks like part of PMI's strength is it's really building the market. It's sort of becoming the marketplace for all these services. So talk, talk about, I know you mentioned the different pillars, but if you could just hit those three pillars quick and, and really getting to the technology end of it where PMI is really creating its own gravity in the management space. Absolutely, absolutely. That's That's a great question. So, you know, as we take a look at each of the pillars, um, this is a, um, you know, as we look at it, this is a maybe an older industry. Um, and so with that, there's huge opportunity for us to be able to add um, additional software packages. So um, generally, you know, it's not uncommon for us to encounter property managers who have been doing this for years and keeping track of everything 
um, on Excel, um, maybe, uh, you know, Word documents, uh, things like that. So we're able to bring, uh, bring to the table uh, some of the best, um, the leader in um, website development for property management companies. They, they do, you know, all of the big property management companies out there. And so we've developed a relationship with them so that they can syndicate their properties to tenants. Um, they can um, pull in the MLS, you know, things like that. A, a local property manager wouldn't be able to do that. Um, we've, we've partnered with one of the leaders um, as it relates to the software that they use to manage their business, collect rent, uh, things like that. And, and we've been able to negotiate that so that there's no charge for them uh, to use that software where normally they would pay anywhere from two to three dollars per door on that. So that alone, um, we found that existing property managers have found it to be really effective that they can actually save money by joining PMI. Um, as we look at some of the other industries, we look at um, we look at short term and we look at our short term pillar. Obviously, COVID has um, not been friendly to our short term uh, pillar. However, what we're seeing is that online bookings um, and so the ability to take your properties and syndicate them. And we all know the big players out there with Verbo and with uh, um, Airbnb out there. But um, we also, um, you know, have programs where they don't have to pay the high commissions. And so people can book directly with them. Um, online bookings, as we looked at it, um, continues to increase and, and we'll continue to see that. We've seen the recovery here that our, our bookings on um, our short-term rental uh, have exceeded the same growth as we saw last year. So we're already ahead of where we were last year even with COVID uh, in play and, and the comeback has been really interesting. It's interesting to see where people are wanting to travel. They're wanting to travel to far, um, they're not traveling internationally, they're staying local. They're not going to urban markets. They're going to places like Southern Utah and to Wyoming and to uh, uh, Yellowstone. Um, they're, you know, they're going to places where they can, they can get out of it, get out of the, uh, out of the, uh, away from people, you know, away from their downtown. They want to get out and spend some time with their family. In the association pillar, you know, what we're seeing is, uh, like I mentioned before, the growth of associations out there uh, has, over the past three to five years, has grown exponentially. But what we're finding is that the number of companies who will manage them hasn't grown at that same rate. And so there's great opportunity there. And so programs like um, some of the software programs that we're using um, allow them to be able to uh, manage, uh, you know, manage them at a cost effective uh, price point. Uh, you know, a, a local business owner wouldn't be able to, uh, they wouldn't be able to go in and secure the software. This is something that we've been able to do because of our buying power and the number of franchisees we have. So we're able to make that available to our franchisees at a rate that, that makes sense to them. Vanessa, when, when I look at the brand, I mean, in any brand, especially now, I'm looking for pro probably what is the definition of flexibility? Because, um, you know, we, we just got hit with arguably the, the worst thing that's ever going to hit our lives. Hopefully that, hopefully. Right. Um, and I, and I, I, I think about what PMI has and because of your flexibility, it comes from residential to commercial to association to, to vacation. So because you have these four pillars, the reality is there, there, there's probably gonna be ebb and flow based mm -hmm. on what's happening in the world in each of these categories. Does that help you build confidence in the buyer when they're coming to the table to say, look, if, if something happens to residential, it could go up in commercial. Is that part of the sales process? That's very much part of the sales process. And we actually saw that. Um, what we did when, um, when short term, when this impacted our short term pillar, for anybody who was only in short term, what we did is we said, hey, um, we're going to give you the opportunity to train you, do some remote training to teach you how to do uh, so any of the other pillars. And so we had quite a few franchisees uh, take us up on that offer um, and we trained them to um, go into to long term or to residential. Um, as well as to association management. Um, for them, it, it was a life savings because, you know, the ability to get up and running, we could still do showings remotely. You know, people still wanted, people still were moving. Um, home 
uh, you know, as we look at brokerage and we look at people buying and selling homes is still, you know, um, very, very active. Um, I was talking to um, one of our local builders here and and he said that generally in a good month, um, they generally were selling about 40 homes a month. Um, and just recently uh, with with COVID going on, they've, they're generally selling about 40 per week. And, you know, these are people who are, you know, one, they're working remotely, so they need more space. Two, they're, they can work from anywhere these days. You know, you've got tech companies that are are uh, saying, hey, we're not bringing our, our team back until the end of 2021. It gives them far more flexibility. And so with this, we're, we're able to take advantage of that with, with um, uh, showings, you know, self-showing software, um, with the ability to um, pay rent online, uh, things like that, that, that really has, has provided a lot of ability to diversify the, where their income is coming from. You know, so re reflecting on your franchisees right now, how they weathered the storm and, and those franchisees that reached out to you, supplement their training and their services, what, what creates an ideal fit for PMI in terms of franchisees um, and, and other individuals? <laughs> um, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I think that's, uh, well, I, I think for, for, for many who are a service business like PMI, um, you know, you're looking for someone with a, a sales and marketing mindset. You know, you need the ability to build relationships, do some networking. How our businesses grow is through strong net, strong networking um, and, and building great relationships with local realtors, um, you know, being able to do presentations, things like that. Um, we've... Now, whether or not our franchisees have that skill set or they hire that skill set, um, that is, you know, that is ideal uh, from from our standpoint. But again, you know, it's kind of that crystal ball. If we had a crystal ball for understanding who our perfect candidate is, um, we'd probably open a different franchise brand and franchise that. <laughs> What is what is your take on the future, Danessa? If you if you look at how things are going, I mean, clearly you're you're optimistic, and and that that is fantastic to hear. You're in a great category, and even like some things like an Airbnb is going to continue to get disrupted. Um, even short term rentals, it's going to go state by state. There's a lot of rotation that's going to happen in some of that stuff. But what's your take on the future? How, are you optimistic? Are you feeling good? Where, where's your head at around that? Yeah. Um, we're extremely optimistic. Um, I think we are, um, we regularly here uh, just kind of are so appreciative and so thankful for the industry that we're in. Um, part of it is because, you know, what we were talking about how recession resistant we are. Um, you know, as we were looking at it, we were running some numbers and um, as we were putting, uh, putting together our item 19 for our FDD, um, you know, rent collection for our uh, residential pillar, you know, was generally pre-COVID was about 97, 98% rent collection um, for April and May, kind of those prime, you know, um, COVID months. Uh, we were at 95% rent collection. So from our standpoint, we look at that and we say, hey, you know, this, this for, from our standpoint, COVID wasn't much of a hiccup for us um, for our, our residential pillar. As we look to the future, um, you know, we, we see, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. Um, we've learned about the use of technology. I think everybody has been doing uh, virtual discovery days and our virtual discovery days, we continue to hold them every month. And we're getting anywhere from 10 to 20 attendees at our virtual discovery days. We're doing them for three to four hours, um, depending on the number of candidates. And, uh, and they've got great questions. And it gives us the ability to get in front of far more people than we've been able to do when they just come to Lehigh, Utah um, and spend, you know, and spend the day with us. So we see, we see some opportunity there. The other thing that we see is we know um, we love that we, we've got four pillars and we've got the brokerage piece as well um, as part of our portfolio. But we also know that there are there are there's a demographic out there that's also the DIY. 
You know, they want to do their own, they want to manage their own doors. You know, they, they've got a few properties, they can do it themselves. Well, how can we be an asset to them there as well? So from, from our standpoint, we see that there's, there's plenty of opportunity for us. I mean, when we're talking about, you know, an $88 billion market here in just in the U S uh, for us, there's, you know, we're, we've got so much opportunity to continue to grow this without having to, um, without having to, you know, recreate the wheel here. So it's, it's pretty exciting time at, at PMI. We, we always talk about how our goal is to continue to improve on our mousetrap. We feel like we've got the best mousetrap, um, but then we've got to, we've got to get it. We, we'll continue to improve it. We'll continue to add new features to it. It's a fun time. Yeah. You know, Danessa, do you feel like as a team that going through COVID sort of redefined or amplified the value of PMI? I mean, I'm always, what I, I find businesses interesting, those businesses that exist and people don't even realize they're there and the services they provide. Do you feel like you guys have like a new light is shown, shown on PMI? Um. I do, I do, um, and and I think it's it's magnified in a couple of different ways. Um, one, I think uh, I our, I'm pretty proud of our team. I mean, we've got we've got an amazing team here, and I maybe everybody says that, but I really feel like we've got a a hungry um, growth mindset kind of group. You know, we, we built our core values and we said, Hey, you know, what are we looking for? And we wanted people who own it. And we want people who have that growth mindset who, um, you know, we're, we're excited about the model that we bring to the industry, but we also, we also know that, um, that there's so much more. And so as I look at, our ability to kind of increase our exposure. I see that manifested by the fact that we have very successful property managers reaching out to us saying, Hey, we want in, we've been watching you guys for a while. Um, we, and generally, you know, our conversions have predominantly been focused on the residential end. Um, but we've got, we've got some folks down in Puerto Rico who um, are an association management uh, team. And they're saying, we love what we see with your residential uh, Puerto Rican business. And so with that, we want, we want to convert, um, and, and build, and we want to convert on the association end. Um, we've got existing property managers who, who are saying, Hey, we see you guys at all of the, um, NARPM events and the, um, the DRMA events and, um, all of these different industry, um, industry specific, uh, conferences, things like that. And they're, they're coming up to us and saying, Hey, tell us more. So we like that. We like that, that COVID has allowed us to get our word out a little bit more. People are home. They're tooling around online. They're doing their research. And, um, you know, from our standpoint, we closed eight deals last month, um, during COVID. So we're, we're, we're going to ride this wave. Janessa, what, what I love about this conversation is that, you know, I, I think the media in general has focused on all negativity and, and to be, to be frank, so, so, have, uh, so have we, we've, we've navigated through how our business is fighting through COVID. Um, so it's refreshing to hear the positivity that comes from you and, and the way you guys are looking at things that, that you're able to get deals through that the pivoting of the brand or the essentials that you had in place, even prior to this are paying dividends. Um, so we appreciate the time that you've given us. Um, for more information on PMI, go to propertymanagementinkfranchise.com. For Charles, I'm Nick. Danessa, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you.